What's up, everybody? This is Aquarius Roberts back at it again here on the Peace Dealer channel, bringing you your 2019 New Year, which I don't believe is actually the New Year's because it's in April, but we'll talk about that later. But um, 2018 has been a wild year for everybody, right? A lot of learning, a lot of lessons to do. A lot of a lot of people came and went, right? A lot of closure, a lot of a lot of a lot of um, moving forward. You know, uh, that year in the Chinese uh, Chinese was the year of the fire rooster, if I'm correct. And in 2018 was the year of the fire rooster. So it wasn't supposed to be light at all. It was supposed to be very purifying and uh, authenticating, right? I felt like that was the year for us. Was like trying to authenticate ourselves and and get rid of the things in our lives that no longer were necessary for our future because we have future things coming up um, that are going to send us in a new direction so we don't have no place for the things that are there um, that were there uh, that is that wasn't helping us move forward with our lives so Let's talk about it, right? Um, you usually look at a chart. I'm a person that does solar charts. Hopefully others are with me. Solar charts are your returns, basically your the returning energy for the rest of the year coming forth. So um, every year on the 31st, I, I look at the chart of the day and um, I apply that to the year, right? Because uh, those are the energies basically that we're going to be um, really diving into this year um, that's going to open us up to new life. Now, first and foremost, I'm a person that really looks at, um, I really look at um, Aries, anything that's in Aries first, because it's cardinal and it's the first sign of the zodiac and it is the head first is where the ideas come to. I'm looking at Aries first. So uh, what we have right now in Aries is Mars, right? And uh, it's conjunct Chiron and Pisces. So Pisces energy for me is like compassionate, ever flowing, uh, intimacy, uh, unconditional love uh, or unconditional kind of romance, you know? Uh, this is for the lovers only, you know, kind of things, you know, so get alone and uh, vibe out to your tribe. <laughs> but um, no, Pisces energy is very compassionate and it's very loving energy to, towards others, compassion towards others type of energy. Um, and Right now, Chiron is the wounded healer, right? He's, he's Chiron, the wounded healer, and he's in Pisces. So I look at Pisces as sensitive spots in our lives. Everybody's got a sensitive spot in their life um, that kind of takes them off the handle. You know, um, if you say something about my mama, it's over. And I'm not saying that's not the same for everybody's mama, but some more than others. You know what I mean? And so um, this is about the things that are sense that has that has uh, desensitized us, which is funny, and we'll get more into that in a second. But Chiron is uh, healing the sensitivity within you. Now, um, Neptune is also in Pisces. So Neptune is giving off this very spiritual aura. It's direct now. Uh, it's no longer in retrograde, which is good. Um, and actually this year coming up, we'll have all the planets um, direct, which is awesome because this year was full of them. We had, uh, what, a six planet retrograde uh, uh, symphony, right? Orchestrating our lives. Uh, last year, and uh, I don't know how many people fell off the boat and had to get back on again, but I'm, whoever's here to see this video, I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you made it out alive. It's been real for all of us. I've had several transitions in my life this year, 
Um, um, and I'm glad I'm here. Let's put it like that, man. Um, <laughs> glad I'm here. Um, but anyways, so that Pisces energy is giving off compassion. So uh, Neptune and Spice, Pisces is giving off the energy for people to be more compassionate to others, right? More sensitive to the needs of others and to, the, to your personal needs, right? Chiron's giving the healing to you, right? I, I look at Chiron as always like the self energy. It's the energy that you need to make you feel good, right? To make you feel whole. And so um, Mars is in Aries. Yay, moving into a new sign out of Pisces into its home sign, right? Because Mars rules the Aries and it's zero degrees this year um, at a karmic degree. Um, very critical degree. So zero degrees are critical, critical degrees. Um, and they're, they're, for me, zero is the number of the fool. And so the fool card in tarot. And so it's the time of new starts, right? Um, and the endings are already ended. The endings are done, right? We've come through all that. When we went in, when Mars was in Pisces, our energy was built towards uh, cleaning out our closets. It was like cleaning out that emotional closet. Them things that you've been holding on to last year was time to let go because like I said, this year, your life's going into a new direction, right? Because it's one, Mars is in Aries. Mars is initiating. It's initiating from the core where you got to be at, where you got to go. And so Mars in Aries is initiating a new program for you. Conjunct Chiron, it's releasing the old program. The old program that you've held on to, the things that have sensitized you, whether you don't like how people talk to you, right? You don't like when people get loud voice or you don't like when people disrespect you, you know? Uh, you don't like when people are selfish. You don't like when people, um, people just disrespect you in any type of way that is not good for your, your, your vibration, right? That's what Pisces energy is. I think it's like your aura, your, your vibration that you give off to other people, right? Because Pisces energy is that energy that everybody wants a piece of. Everybody wants a piece of Pisces energy. It's funny, y'all are the most betrayed, right? Because y'all are the sign of the hangman. The hangman card is the 12th house and that's Pisces house, right? And so a sacrificing for the greater benefit. They are the sacrifices of love, right? We all know that you guys can snap off if you needed to, but for the most part, y'all trying to show everybody that love is more important than anything in the world, right? And, and you'll die by that, Pisces. Um, but that's the thing, right? Is that we can't love if we have blockage. And so Mars and Aries is, is, is providing a way, right? But you got to be open to the way um, of the light. And so Chiron is helping you release those things because Chiron's going to be jumping into Aries also. And so Chiron's going to want to leave its baggage at the door that you've been holding on to. And you want to look at your natal chart and see where your Chiron is positioned natally so you can see how Chiron is working out your own personal life. Now, uh, Mars and Aries um, it's a time of initiation. It's a time of having passion and moving forward. You know how last year, you know, even when I did the videos, if you go back to some of the older videos or even Peace Dealers videos, you know, you'll see that um, at that time last year, it was about releasing and being still and, you know, not a lot of movement, not a lot of traveling, more just kind of fall back and, 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 and just kind of filtering, you know. But now that you've filtered, what are you going to do now? Now you got to fill up your tank with more water, right? New water, new spiritual water, right? Neptune, Pisces, Chiron, Pisces energy, right? New spiritual water needs to be filled inside you. So Aries is the spirit. Aries is the spirit. It's the ace of wands. It's the spirit of everything, right? It's the spark of the divine that gives you inspiration and creativity so that you can start new projects. Have babies. Anyways, uh, <laughs> for some of you, um, 
but this is just about starting new projects. Or if you weren't in a direction that you needed to be in that was good for your life, then it's time to be set into that position. Um, and so next I start to talk about the North Node in Cancer, okay? Because this has a strong value to this also, to the position of Aries, um, to the position of the Aries Mars in the trunk, I said in the trunk. Well, you know, it's in the trunk of this because the North Node in Cancer is like enlightening, right? I love the North Node in Cancer because it's the time for um, women to show themselves appreciation. You know, uh, how y'all women out there? Hope y'all doing good. You know, uh, I appreciate y'all. I, 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 I ride with the movement, you know, you know, holler at me. Uh, <laughs> But no, 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 no. Um, North Node in Cancer um, is about finding the intimacy in you um, and, and finding that path. Uh, cancer rules the moon card. And um, the moon card is all about that spark of creativity. It's about being lost in the woods with a flashlight and you need to find your way through, right? And so... Um, even though everything's dark around you uh, and there's so many different paths to get out the woods, you're finding the one that's best suited for you, that's best suited for your needs and your life that'll make you happy, right? So North Node and Cancer is about going back to the past. And that's what this is about. This is about going back to the past emotionally and getting a better picture of your life, of the things that you've been through, the people you've been around. And you're starting to look at those things now and looking at them like, um, how does this benefit me? How does this, how does this work for my nurturing abilities? You know, is this good for me to, to carry this emotion with me? Is it good when, and, and right about now at this time in your life, like, you know your triggers. From last year, we were acknowledged all our triggers that we're dealing with. So this year, you should have came out knowing your triggers, knowing what, what was stopping you from moving forward. And in relationships, if somebody says something to alarm you and you react to it, right, is that stopping you from getting opportunities in your life that you can get? Sometimes that can do that, right? Like Moses, right? Not, not trying to get all like super spiritual on you guys like that, but um, everything's a metaphor for me, you know? And so in this case, Moses wanted to get into the new land or whatever the case may be. And he couldn't get in the new land because um, he got angry and struck a rock, you know? And so it was like, um, you, had the, you had the opportunity to do great things in your life and you chose to let your emotions conquer you. So you can't get anything that you want to accomplish, you know, or you can't move to that next level of life because you're, you, um, you're holding on to those feelings, right? That are stopping you, you know, jealousy, right? If you get jealous every time somebody do something good, who's going to want to hang around you? Who's going to want to be a part of your life? You know, uh, even though it's a trait that everybody deals with at some point in time in their life, it's about balance. How much of that is controlling your life, right? And that's cancer because cancer is a sign of feelings. It's a sign of straight, of raw emotion. It's about that feeling that you get, right? And, um, and um, that feeling that you get, you have to listen to. So it's about listening to your intuition also. Not just about the femininity. The femininity is the past. It's it's the it's the intuitive side, right? It's the it's the it's the it's the meditative side. It's the blessing from above, right? That created life itself, the zero. That's what the woman is, the zero, you know, the yoni, the zero, right? And so this is about uh getting in touch with your feminine side, getting in touch with the femininity, and it's not about being, you know, um, for men out there, you know, that ain't like that, 
you know, um, this is not about like being in touch, like, uh, you know, I'm going to put on a dress or something like that. This is just about being more you, you know, having more finesse and style and being able to kind of blend in and adapt to your circumstances and your situations in life, right? Healing those wounds that caused the cancer energy because everybody's got the cancer energy in this water, but it's a place of receptivity that helps you see uh, pain right? Because in order to be a cancer, you have to have some type of pain, emotional pain to your life, right? So some of you, those of you who are out there are cancer sons or a lot of cancer energy, somebody in your life had um, emotionally abandoned you in some type of way to where you feel like you need to cling on to something to feel the nurturing, to feel love, right? Um, and so that's the energy for everybody when cancer comes around. It's about that energy that creates a soft spot for you. And then Neptune's in Pisces, so it's making that wound more visible. Like if it was hidden from your sight, you can see it now with the Pisces energy because they see with the eyes that don't need eyes. <laughs> Tight, right? Um, so um, it's actually 26 degrees this year um, for the 31st, and um, which is an eight, which is an eight, and eight is the number of power, recognition, understanding, right, and, and, and money, right, and repeated cycles, cycles that you have been cycling all your life, just cycling, eight degrees, right? So it's about those letting go of those cycles, letting go, letting go of it all, right? And um, also we got, uh, we got the moon in Scorpio, right? And the moon only stays in a uh, sign for two days. But like I said, I'm also looking at this as a solar chart. So this, are, this is the energy for the year also. So this is about cleaning up wounds. And moving forward into the future with Mars and Aries, moving forward to better projects, new things are coming your way. New things are coming into your life. And it's time to get adjusted. You got to let go of the old to get to the new. Venus is conjunct Ceres, opposite Juno, right? And Juno is what you want out of a partner. It's not only that, Juno doesn't only deal with what you, it's just the nurturing abilities that you have for partners, for other people, for intimacy, friendships, you know what I mean? Just the intimacy that you kind of look for to the people that you look up to, you know, that you have standard for. And so Venus series is the harvester. Venus and series are both Venus. <laughs> uh, Ceres is the harvester, is the empress, it's the empress nurturer, right? And Venus is nurturing, it's nurturing compassion, it's your aesthetics, right? It's your feelings, it's your, it's your self-worth, right? It's your value in life, it's your value for the people that you have in your life and how you see them right? How you, how you express your, your gratitude, right? It's like the four of wands, that um, gratitude card of feeling complete, where you make, what makes you feel complete inside, right? And so this is opposite Juno, what you want, what you want, and what you want are opposing each other. So this is creating some type of confusion. And this is already Libra energy, right? So just, just bear with me here. So this is creating some type of con confusing, confusing energy um, that you're gonna have to work with, right? And it's about making those decisions. It's about staying or going. Am I gonna stay in this situation like this? And this doesn't have to be a um, cosmic event, you know, but it, possibly will be like a cosmic event where it's going to create some type of confusion and you're going to have to make a choice between two things and you're going to have to decide what's more profitable for your life this year uh, coming up in 2019. 
Um, and it's also about standing up in your integrity with it. So um, uh, Juno is 20 degrees, right? Which is um, judgment's degree, <laughs> coming to a judgment. Um, and then Venus is 23 degrees, five new perspective, right? And then Ceres is 21 degrees, finding enlightenment. So since Ceres is the harvest here, your the moon is there also 14 degrees, which is five new perspective again, right? So we got two fives and we got a three, right? Two fives, three, uh, two fives is 10 plus the three, 13 for stability, right? Oh, I'll build with you all day long. <laughs> but stability, right? Stabilizing yourself, stabilizing what you want, how you feel inside, being sure, being right, being, being acknowledgeable, giving yourself recognition. Forget the recognition from other people because this recognition is coming from yourself. This is Scorpio, balancing yourself, balancing your emotions out this year, balancing out, not, not, being too, not being too extreme about things and being in harmony and compassion, being more compassionate to yourself, being more compassionate to others around you, finding your nurturing side, especially at Cancer North Node. Cancer North Node, that's leading the theme off. The North Node is where you're trying to get to. So you're trying to get to being more soft, right? Not so hard as the last year. We had to be tough. We had to be soldiers. We had to be uh, soldiers. Not this year, man. We got to chill out, man. The fire rooster year is over. Yes, I study every art. Um, so it's time to chill. But um, also, we have... Um, um, we have Jupiter and Sagittarius. We have Mercury and Sagittarius, right? And so I'm looking at those signs too. I mean, I'm looking at those too because, um, because uh, Jupiter is about the philosophy and then Mercury is the messenger, right? And so this could be a time of speaking truth, telling the truth to people, but telling the truth to yourself. <laughs> it's so interesting because it's like all leading back to us you know this energy because it's like um um Sagittarius is Sagittarius is a sign about the self right they they're trying to conquer their own quest right but what is this quest you're trying to conquer this quest of truth that you're trying to find out so there's a journey going on here it's an it's a it's an intuitive journey with Jupiter because Jupiter is taking you to the sky. So it's something about your mind. Your mind is taking you to new heights. An elevation is happening here uh, this year uh, mentally. It's a mental elevation of your mind. It's a mental elevation of how you think, how you control things, how you feel about things, right? Just stepping on that new plateau because you know we do change with time. I know people's like, I'm the same me forever. No, you're not. Nobody is. Nobody stays the same. Just like the universe had to change and make two and a three and four and all that other stuff, you know, the ge geometric way, you know, for, for my people who study hermetics, you know, the geometric way is that spirit couldn't stay conformed, right? Spirit couldn't stay conformed, so he needed to expand, right? Because that's consciousness. Consciousness expands. All consciousness expands. So nothing stays the same. So here with Mercury and Sagittarius and Jupiter and Sagittarius, this is a heightening of your human philosophy and the morals that we stand, the morals and ethics that we stand by. This is about maybe this year going to learn a new skill, going to school and learning um, how to communicate better. This is also learning about communication because um, Mercury and Sagittarius, they're actually great communicators. Um, they're great communicators, but they're philosophical. So this is about reaching new heights and new morals and um, overcoming the limits of the old you. Your older limits are gone as dead. You ain't who you used to be. It's brand new time now, and it's time to lay some new foundation down for the future, 
because whatever you build upon now, it's going to be your thing for the next 20 years, maybe. So make wise decisions this year, especially upon the new moon in Capricorn on the 5th, because it's going to be time for you to work and stabilize and start implementing those plans that you have. It's a good thing this year to write a goal list for, for that night. Go outside, tell yourself a story, set it on fire, and then send it to the Holy Lands. You know what I mean? For, for good intuition and keep safe, to value, right? For self-value, for whatever project you're trying to work on, whatever it is, whatever you're trying to move forward on, whatever you're trying to integrate and stabilize and bring down um bring down bring down to reality right because it's the dream world pisces neptune the dream world is alive but you're trying to pull from the dream world into reality with this energy so saturn is conjunct sun uh in capricorn so this is why i speak more because the sun is um the main point in theme right and so sun is in capricorn this month but this is the theme for the year this is the theme for the year right? And so um, Sun conjunct Saturn in Capricorn is giving people more hard iron bodies, more steel body, right? Being able to see, being able to become a trooper, like becoming a warrior. That's how I look at Saturn Sun. I'm Saturn conjunct Sun, 19 degrees, zero degrees conjunction. Um, and so Saturn conjunct Sun is is a um, whew, it's a toughie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's a toughie because it's like the Sun is your light. That's your light within. That's your desires. That's the things that are important to you, right? Your goals, the things you're setting forth. And I was just talking about Mars um, and Aries. Right, so it's the energy's there to move forward, but the sun, Saturn is sitting on the sun, so it's giving it that a bit of um goons and goblins type of thing. Where's your heart at? You got a chicken heart, that's what it's about, right? It's like, are you scared? Are you scared to live? Are you scared to set goals? Are you scared to be great? Are you scared to let go of not trusting in love? Are you scared of yourself and what you're capable of? What are you afraid of? What's stopping you from being great? What's stopping you from being great? Because we all are great on our own. A lot of people don't tell, oh, well, yeah, you know, I got bills to pay. Ain't no time to be great. There's always a time to be great because you are taking care of your family and be grateful of that. Everybody wants more out of life. That's what this Jupiter and Sagittarius is also teaching us. Like, how much do you need to be happy? How much do you need to feel whole? What it what what is take where what is that's that philosophy that Jupiter's trying to give us? Like, what where where are you going with all this? Okay, you want the boats, the cars, and all that. Once you get that stuff, what you gonna do? I'm throw parties and stuff, and that's selfish selfish desires they're minor desires that come out to be nothing trust me i've had the money <laughs> comes out to be nothing and i'm still got the money now again i got the money but my mind says different because i realized that uh money can take care of things that you need but money can't help you be a better person Money can't help you help other people. It can maybe ease other people, but let's keep it real. You give somebody a dollar, they're coming back for two. You best believe it. If they ain't coming back for two, then they're going to send somebody that needs two. That's this real knowledge right there. You give somebody an inch, they're going to take a yard eventually. You be nice to somebody, they're going to expect you to be great. That's right, a little bit of knowledge. But um, yeah, so 
Saturn conjunct Sun energy is about looking within the gnomes, the, 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 the hard aspects of yourself and finding love, putting love into that, putting integrity into that, standing up for what your goals are. It's time to set some new goals in your life because change is on the way because Saturn conjunct Sun is conjunct Pluto and South Node. Oh, so this is definitely letting go to past. This is definitely the past coming back and hitting you too. Because Pluto conjunct Saturn conjunct the South Node is the past coming back. But you're having to you're having to work on letting go of it, right? So it's coming back in another form. Now you want to watch the people that come around you. You want to pay attention to what lessons you're learning this year because these lessons are going to almost seem like deja vu lessons. And I'm like, man, I've seen that before. I've been through that before. I've experienced that before. What is that? That is crazy, right? But really it's for your surgery. <laughs> what Pluto, Pluto is trying to assert, is coming in the room to do surgery on you. He's just not telling you. He's just going to do it because it's conjunct Saturn. Saturn also goes within and kind of it's like the fight within. And then Pluto is the knife to help. It's like uh, uh, um, it's like um, if you needed a <laughs> if you needed a, a, a tool to keep your, you know, body open while you take a knife and you go in there and you cleanse out. That's this Saturn conjunct Pluto aspect. It's a time of changing your inner health habits, habits that you have that are no good for you. And um, I, I almost think like before it was about bringing the habits up, right? I think I did a video on that before with the, with the, um, the Saturn full moon we had, right? And so now we see the habits, we see the habits that we were acknowledging uh, in 2018. Now, in 2019, we're clearing all that up. It's time to clean out your closet. I'm cleaning out my closet. Oh, Eminem, old school. I know. I know. I know. I know y'all at home. I like, yeah, him, him. Anyways. <laughs> no, nah, but um, anyways. So, yes, that will conclude your, hold on, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to stop this share. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed your astrology review. I guess we're going to jump into the tarot. Um, my cards are actually everywhere right now, but, uh, yeah, if you guys get timestamp, cause I'm going to do this for all the signs, um, that will be awesome. And I hope you guys have a great year. And, um, if you've got new year's resolutions, I hope you keep up with them because personally I got tired of setting them cause I don't keep them. I just kind of like, uh, work with the energy of what's out there right now, you know what I mean? So um, that I can focus on that. Cause I mean, I have my goals and the universe has its goals, right? And so which one usually wins? And I know half of the time it ain't mine. So, and that's just for you people that are led for the, from the spirit, y'all understand that, right? Y'all understand that. So what can I tell everybody about the, beginning of 2019 what energy are we coming in with i know we're trying to move forward and do great things right because i'm trying to be great just like y'all we all want to be great for all signs please give me some advice for the year 2019 year 2019 as we look so the first card I came up with is the King of Cups. Funny I would come up with this card, right? 
because the King of Cups is about compassion. And that's what I was talking about, right? Compassion towards others. This is about letting go of the hard aspects and kind of being emotionally in control of yourself. This is about overcoming obstacles and seeing what is kind of um, watching your battles, right? Watching your, but choosing your battles wisely. There you go. Choosing your battles wisely. So at this time, you want to choose your battles wisely, people, with others, right? And show your compassion. This is a helper. This is a philosopher, you know, person that's very in tune with themselves. This is a water energy. This is a Scorpio Pisces cancer energy, right? <laughs> For 2019. And I was just talking about it all. So yeah, this is uh, the King of Cups. So this is like, be more of the King of Cups this year. Be more compassionate. Um, you know, um, he has the ship on here. So I know that he's trying to move forward, right? He doesn't stay in one place. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of people that kind of count on him to voyage around and do things for them. So I, I also see the King of Cups as a person who um, emotionally believes in himself a lot, you know, and um, he's really there for people. You know, he's, he's kind to himself emotionally and he doesn't get too wrapped up in his emotions. You know, this I think this is like a higher level kind of uh, water card you know, because this is the king. Um, king is a four-letter word, so it's about stability, right? It's about stability of the mind, of the emotions. Um, I also see traveling. Um, I'm seeing some traveling going on, uh, and I'm just seeing, like, finding your love. That's exactly what, what, what this makes me feel like, like, finding your love, finding what makes you feel good inside. It's about letting go of the things that are too hard, you know what I mean, too tough, you know what I mean, or too much, like too much criticism, you know, from others, too much uh, disrespect, you know, um, not enough caring, or, you know, maybe you stop caring about a project, you know, um, or friends that you were dealing with, like maybe you wanna stop dealing with certain friends, um, I just see you letting it go. Did, like last year was like realizing this thing, these things, realizing these bad friends, realizing this lifestyle, these habits, these patterns. Now it's cut them out, let them go. We out of here. We done. Finito. Arriba dirtche. We out. Right. <laughs> and so uh, the shadow card of this reading is the world <laughs> ah, i love the spirits so the world comes up in the shadow and this is about completing cycles of the past it has the four six six symbols on here uh fixed ast astrological signs should i say uh on here and this is about breaking free from your routines from your routines your habits um, it's about coming in completion of yourself, seeing the world as a better place. That's what I see. Expanding your emotions, expanding your horizons, right? Uh, just being on top of the world, right? And this lady in here is naked, right? Tough. So she's naked. So she's vulnerable. She's not afraid. She's not afraid of being her true self. She's not afraid of standing up for what she believes in. She also, because there's a, a, a board or a robe over here, I don't know how they did it with this card right here, but uh, with this card right here, she basically is, um, you don't know her gender, right? And so there's no judgment here. There's no pretense here. There's no looking at the past. There's no looking at the future. It's just being in the state of now. Being complete and whole and knowing that you are the universe. That the universe is you and you are the universe. I am he and I am there for what I am. Eminem. I am whatever you say I am. 
I tried to hit that in my nerve voice. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I man, I so enjoy this. But yes, this is about coming to a completion and stepping out of fixed ways of believing patterns that you've uh, stuck with in your life. This is about giving them the healing with the snake here. That's how I feel. Um, and I also feel with this card and the king card because they both have like these snake skin uh, or watery serpent, you know, water kind of scales, the scales, right? Um, and the scales in here is different reflections of self. So I almost feel like like it's like finding the it's like finding the beautiful aspects of yourself and 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 learning to shine on, right? The dull parts of yourself you're letting go, and it's almost like now you're ready to build, right? And and spark something new, and come up with something greater for yourself, right? We got the Knight of Cups here in the crossing position right cross in this reading and so once again this is about compassion right the uh crossing position you know is about searching for your love going on your destination the knight of cups you know he knows love he understands it he has no problem with it he'll look for it wherever he may go wherever he may go he's compassionate he's creative he's an artist i see this as artistry too a lot of water indications here, a lot of artistry, right? People getting in touch with their creativity, their emotions, standing up for what you artistically believe in, passionate about even, right? Emotionally passionate about your desires, right? Your deeper inner wants. That's how I feel, like your deeper inner wants. And the Knight of Cups is basically saying, go for your passions. Don't, don't, don't let go of what is important to you. Take that journey. Don't be afraid to go on that journey for what you want. So the next card is the Ace of Swords, right? And so the Ace of Swords in here um, is basically talking about communication happening, cutting through the cords, right? The universe giving you the spunk to be able to get through, start talking about how you feel express yourself this is the card of the throat chakra so this is about expressing you but you know what's funny i thought about pluto in this too i don't know why because maybe because it's the sword in here and just cutting through those lies and illusions and parts of yourself that didn't believe that you could be more or, or know more or understand more right and so the next one is death <laughs> Death is here, speaking of a transformation, back to life, endings, closure, this is in the past, endings, closure, right, we were seeing the dark sides of ourselves, we were seeing the shadows, the gnomes, the demons, the devil, right, the things that we needed to come in harmony with, right, in our life, and we became one with them, that's what I feel like 2018 was about, it was about becoming one with yourself becoming one with the truth you have to become what you sorry excuse me you have to become one with darkness and light they are both suitable they are both suitable they are both good right because you can't understand the light without knowing the darkness you just can't do it you can't do it so your fifth card for the mental is the Empress, and this is a Venus ruled card. Um, and this is about mentally becoming more compassionate, more, it, and, and it just feels like good times are coming. Better times are coming this year. 2019, I think it's going to be an interesting year because I think mentally everybody wants to let go of 2018. It's been a rough one. And we had to confront ourselves and we had to confront people around us. We had to use more of our throat chakras. And so this time coming, this year coming, is going to be the same thing, right? And so uh, the Empress here in the mental is about, you know, seeing things, uh, seeing a brighter a vision, right? Seeing a brighter vision about life and seeing things differently and not looking at them the way that you used to look at them. They have no essence to you anymore, right? That's why death is there in the, uh, in the past 
because death has given that death so that your goals and your hopes and dreams are that you can make new fruit. You can expand on your awareness and enlightenment because this is the three card. So you can expand on your awareness and enlightenment to see the beauty that is inside of you, the beauty that's inside your environment and having gratitude so that you do get blessed with more. So this is a year of being able to be blessed with more. You deserve it. That's right. <laughs> so in the near future, we have six months within the uh, year. We have the hermit. So I look at the hermit. It's a Virgo card, and it's about going deep within to find answers that you do not have. And you need to understand these answers or you can't move forward. And so Virgo is about cleaning out your closet. So I just feel like that's the initiation phase, right? And so um, you got these plans and I feel like it's coming in the time of letting go, like cleaning that actual closet out, as I was talking about earlier and also in the astrology, cleaning out those, those closets. Like you found the clutter, you know where the clutter is in your life and now it's time to clean out the cl clutter, right? So y'all, y'all, spring cleaning time, right? In December, in January, in February, March, April. <laughs> no, but um, no, it's it's spring cleaning for right now. And then once we hit into that six month mark, you know, because with the hermit card, it promises that the hermit will come up with an answer right? So you don't stay in hermit mode. Yes, you do go into hermit mode. You go into contemplation mode and you start thinking about things a little harder, right? And so Venus and the hermit, Virgo, Mercury, so Venus and Mercury having a conversation, which is like the Ace of Swords, right? It's having a conversation with your soul, with the soul inside of you and telling yourself, I need to let go. Wonder if the hermit is kind of dropping that whatever he, his light <laughs> into the ocean so that he can see himself clear, right? I wonder if. Just an analogy. So next we have the page of wands, and this makes me think about that Aries Mars energy, right, for this year. And um, the the this is the self position. So this is you know, you right now, your energy, and it's embarking on new paths, new things that are coming to your life, new energy, new spiritual energy, just that will to get up and move and get something accomplished. But what is it that we got to get accomplished, right? So the page of uh, Pentacles is in the environment. And so there's a lot of learning going on this year, learning new skills, learning new arts, right? New progress, stable situations going on. I see a lot of stability in this reading, right? There's so much, there's earth in here, right? This Virgo card, uh, this card right here, uh, the Empress, you know, this card right here, Virgo, you know, uh, Taurus card with the, with the Page of Pentacles, the Taurus card, right? There's just so much earth in here, <laughs> Yeah, there's earth and water here. So I'm almost feeling like um, plants, right? You think of plants, earth and water, plants growing, sowing new seeds for tomorrow, sowing new roots, sowing new oats, sowing your royal oats, <laughs> sowing new oats for tomorrow so that you can have more for tomorrow, right? Um, and in the heart position, we have judgment. We have judgment in the heart position. What I say, cleaning out my closet. So it's cleaning out the closet. Judgment is given forgiveness from the heart. Cleaning, cleaning out the heart. Letting things go. Giving them their place. Giving them their light. Giving them their life, right? Finding that higher calling and elevating. This is why I see the heart is elevating. The heart is expanding on awareness. And this is a Pluto card. The heart is expanding in awareness and in integrity, finding out the truth of who you are and looking deep within yourself and finding out the goals that you got that you want to prosper in and making that light and carrying on like the chariot does in card number seven. He observed the future, right? 
So your outcome card is the Ace of Pentacles. So the Ace of Pentacles is the outcome card is saying that you are assured that things will come together and be stabilized. Whatever goals that you have that you're setting for for 2019, you will make them happen. They are yours. They are yours. All signs, they are yours. Whatever you, whatever you think about that you want to manifest, because when I look at judgment, I think there is a higher calling. Are you going to answer it? So uh, there's something in your higher mind that you want to accomplish and do. And in order for you to do that very thing, um, in order for you to do that very thing, you have, you have to clean out your, your closet. You have to let things go and you have to remove what's not worth it in your life because certain things aren't worth it and just don't give them your attention. That, that's the most important thing. Don't give these things your attention because you can't okay so now for the time stamps cards for the signs all right i'll be pulling one card for each signs and going in so for aries can you give me a card for aries for 2019 card for aries for 2019 they are the first time mars is in aries what's going on with aries for 2019 aries for 2019 we have the page of cups so I just feel like you guys are kind of getting more creative around this time uh, this year and just stepping into uh, the creativity inside of you. I feel like the universe is going to offer you new uh, emotional endeavors. So if you got creative skills, you may put some of your old creative things behind to start some new projects. Um, if this is about love, then um somebody will be coming new into your life that may give you an opportunity or a seed of love um and if this is about spirituality i see spirits happening on you and giving you a chance to kind of connect right connect with yourself spiritually uh new beginnings with yourself right um i see this as a Pisces energy and I just feel like seeing your dreams are just dreaming more being more in a dreamy state um kind of like going through things a little bit this year I see y'all going through some things but I just kind of see y'all not not phased by them like y'all not giving them y'all not giving it like a lot of attention like people are being emotional around you and stuff like that and you're just kind of like look at this fish in this cup look what I could do like kind of thing you know what I mean? It's kind of not being phased. It's kind of like moving forward and being focused on what you want to focus on. So if you're looking for new love or something like that this year, it definitely can come to you. Um, and I see it as 12, so it could be within three months. Um, it could be in the number of three, so three, six, or nine months, um, which is all joint. See, look, the page of ones. This is you guys right here in the shadow. All right. So we got Taurus. Taurus. What can I tell Taurus about 2019? Taurus 2019. Taurus 2019. Taurus 2019. Give it to me one time. Ah! Oh, Taurus 2019. Give it to me two times. Oh! Oh. Oh, Taurus completion. Completing some cycles this year. So this must be important for you guys. Uranus is in, will be in Taurus. Uh, in March. And so, yeah, I definitely see you guys kind of closing out and like opening up to some new stuff that you don't even understand. Because even with this, this card right here, this is the ending of a cycle. So new ones are forgetting beginning, but I almost feel like, I almost feel like them new ones beginning, um, y'all have to cut through some personal illusions. So I'm almost feeling like if this comes to uh, work, it's about like, um, completing projects this year with work, you know, or completing cycles. Maybe you might get tired of the job that you're at and you want to go find a new one. Um, also in love, I just feel like coming to a completion, like if there's somebody that you wasn't supposed to be with and you've been with them, because I know you guys like to stay in relationships uh, longer than you need to be. Um, if you've been with somebody for a while and you kind of finally noticed like, 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 uh, it's time for this completion. I'm not feeling naked. You know, I want to get naked, right? I want to be free. 
right? And that's what I think about the world. So it's like in love, like you, y'all going to cancel that person. Y'all going to be like, no, nah, you got to go. I've been writing this out with you for a long time now and it's over. Like I've had enough. I've hung in here and been miserable too long, you know, fixed, fixed too long. Right. Um, yeah, but your shadow card is the queen of swords. So I just feel like y'all wrecking shit. Like y'all kind of just kind of cutting bad people off. Y'all cutting on people off that don't matter. That's stopping y'all from these completions this year, you know, and I also see new events coming towards you, but later on in the year, maybe the six, seven month mark, new adventures coming your way where you can start new things, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah, because this is 21, so this is three also. So this could be three months, six or nine, because um, the numbers are threes and they do triple in a mirror essence. So it doesn't matter how they come, they come. Okay. Hope you guys enjoy. Gemini. Here you go. What can I tell Gemini? Gemini 2019. Gemini 2019. What can I tell Gemini for 2019? Please give me a card for Gemini 2019. Gemini, I got the page of wands. Page of wands. Okay, so I feel like like last year you guys have been kind of contemplative or something like that and kind of just not active too much on everything, just more like kind of planning. That's how I feel like you guys have been planning, but uh, I feel like it's time to put these plans into effect this year and kind of get out there and start showing people your power, your personal power within, right? Uh, this is Aries energy. Um, so I just feel like y'all showing people y'all might, y'all work, you know, and just being relentless about what you want and focused and dedicated, right? Dedicating your friendship, dedicated with your, your friends, your work, your priorities, trying to learn uh, new things when it comes to spiritual endeavors, right? Because uh, wands are all about spirituality. So it's about that spark of the of the divine, right? Just giving you the initiative to, to be able to be touch, touch people, touch others, right? With your words, uh, what you got to say with your ideas. I just feel like your ideas are going to be trying them out this year, but you want to watch. Um, you want to watch not listening um, to advice from others because with the page of uh wands he could get so passionate about stuff and so spiritual about stuff that he forgets what he's being spiritual and passionate about this is one of the more immature cards i guess um uh for the wands so of course you guys are gemini so you guys are playful as hell so yeah this is definitely about you know letting that childlike quality out letting yourself out to play being serious and relentless about your goals telling people not to stop you from being you or doing you you know like everybody's got this thing out for gemini's and it's like shut the fuck up please you know so uh yeah i'm a gemini moon so yeah i can say that um but yeah uh you guys the shadow card is the three of cups so I just feel like reuniting with people that you used to be cool with, right? Are the people that really were cool with you and then the people who weren't, like, they got to go. You know what I mean? Because I feel the four cups coming next. And it's almost like, you know, y'all y'all just, I see a lot of fun this year with you guys, with Gemini. But I also see, like, a lot of lessons stepping back in the past with old people and learning lessons from them again, right? So that you could be able to move on for the future. Um. There you go. So, Cancer, what can I say for Cancer? Ooh, Cancer. Cancer got the Three of Pentacles. I like it. I like it. I like it. The plans are being laid out. The foundation is there. This is a good year for y'all to expand upon your horizons and start new endeavors and projects and things like that. This this is for you guys. Boom. Right? And, um. And um, this is just about like, you know, your your intuitive ideas that you have, you have laid a foundation on them, right? Um, if you have projects that you are trying to accomplish, this is the year to do it. You can accomplish some serious goals this year. Um, I see you working together with teams. 
um, or just creating a group together with somebody. So, you know, what's funny because cancers like to be alone. So this could also mean like you stepping out there and talking with people, like kind of uh, 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 marketing your ideas out there to people more so that they can be heard and that you can build with other people, you know, who you might think like have the understanding that you have when it comes to uh, the, the pinnacles cards. So, um, sorry about that, guys. Leo. <laughs> so, Leo, what can I tell Leo for 2018? Yes, I am a very spiritual person. I'm a 12th house son, and yes, I do get spiritually attacked a lot. So, excuse me if y'all ever catch interferences or anything in my videos because I get spiritually attacked a lot. A lot. The Saturn conjunct sun in the 12th house. So, you know, don't mind it because I want to continue to move forward because this is actually the third time I've recorded this. So, because of interference. So, excuse me, guys. I'm sorry about that. But, anyways, Leo, what can I tell Leo? Leo 2019. Leo 2019. Leo 2019. Leo 2019 got the hangman sacrificing for the greater cause. I was just talking about Pisces, right? Sacrificing for the greater cause. So I just feel like you Leos out there, um, there's something that you want. Maybe it could be a relationship. Maybe it could be a job that you want and you've been making a lot of sacrifices for because you wanted to see come see it come out to a good outcome, you know, maybe you want to take care of your family, your friends, maybe you want to take care of yourself, maybe there's something you just want to do for yourself, like, and it takes, it takes, like, um, the things that you're planning to get it done, and so uh, the hangman here is saying that you got the smarts in your brain to get what you want, if you just listen to yourself, right, and never mind people, you know, and then also I see on the other side, it's like, uh, um, stop sacrificing yourself. Um, stop sacrificing yourself for your family. That's almost what I feel like. Like, stop sacrificing yourself for your family. Like, you can't always do what your family wants you to do. You have to do what you want to do sometimes. So you could be that marker for the family, I guess to say. Um, and then also just, just kind of, you know, looking at things in a different light, in a better light, right? Um, your shadow card is the Empress, which is cool. So um, with this and this Pisces, right, uh, Neptune and then Venus, Neptune and Venus is unconditional love, right? It's like um, lusting for something that you can't have or you really want to have. Um, but it doesn't come to you quick. It comes to you in time. It comes to you in time. Uh, with nurturing. Virgo. Let's go. Virgo. Virgo, 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 Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. My name is Aquarius. Virgo, Virgo. Oh. So yeah, I'll say, I'll say that and then two cards pop out for you guys. All right, Virgo. So we got the four of swords, right? And we also had fell out the moon card, right? So you want to pay attention to things this year. Um, I feel like you guys could be fighting over trying to get people to believe in your thoughts or um, things of the sort, you know? Um, I just feel like, I just feel like, um, cause this card is sensitive and then this card is protective. Right. And so it's, it's almost like this armor, right? This dinged up armor that I think y'all had in, in 2018, it's time to lay it the rest. Um, and, and open up for new compassionate times. Right. Cause this is a kind of like, um, uh, the three swords on the wall. You know what I mean? And um, they are basically the card, the swords and the three of swords, right? That created the heartbreak, right? So in the four is the rest after the heartbreak, trying to get that mental clarity after a heartbreak, 
right? And you're like, you know what? I can do better. I can be better. I am better, right? I don't need that person to be more of me. Like I can have whatever I want, you know? Um, and it's just about finding like that courage, I guess, um, to express your emotions um, and that courage to like rest on things. Don't be fast about making answers. Maybe people could come to you and kind of give you like false, false, just false answers about things, right? And and it, our false uh, opportunities, right? They could come with false opportunities, right? But you got to watch the cycles, watch the cycles of the fish because you're not trying to repeat those cycles from the past, right? So your shadow card is the five of cups. And so this is about, you know, appreciating what you got, right? Um, and seeing things for what they are instead of what they could be right? Uh, forget what they could be, realize what they are, right? So don't get muddied up in your emotions and take time out to reflect on things this year, right? Reflect on these opportunities. Don't, don't answer nothing fast. Don't let nobody fast talk you, right? Take your time and use your mental energy. Okay, Libra, 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 Libra. Libra, 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 Libra 2019. What can I tell Libra for 2019? Couple cards, too many cards. Hold up, Libra. Okay, so Libra, your card that came out is the Six of Swords. So this is about overcoming psychological pain and tendency. Okay, so this is about um, maybe y'all have had some rough moments or y'all been traveling or y'all had a pretty rough year mentally. Y'all have had a lot of mental activities going on in 2018. And now in 2019, you're kind of moving in the smoother waters and you're kind of, you know, seeing things in a new light or a different perspective. But I still see you hanging on to the things from the past and kind of, it's like them hard feelings. It's like you're moving on, but you kind of got hard feelings like, man, that year was tough. Not saying everybody don't feel like that, but it's just like Libra's physical situations that they were going through. Maybe even like, like jumping into different relationships or maybe like you've been in a relationship where it was kind of rough. You know, like back and forth, break up together, break up together, here, there, you know, everywhere. And it's like a lot of mental conflict. I just think think that things are going to like ease up, right, and uh, get better for you guys. Um, I see uh, your shadow card is the six of wands, which is the victory card. And it's overcoming oppression. It's overcoming people that are trying to put you down or don't believe in you or believe in your goals and dreams and stuff like that this year. So you guys uh, just keep your mind open. Uh, Scorpio, 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 2019. What can I tell Scorpio for 2019? What can I tell Scorpio for 2019? I'm cheating. The Ten of Cups wanted to come out for real. They want to come out. Always missing cards that jump out because uh, they have some significance. So I just feel like Scorpio going for their emotional happiness, right? Fulfillment, dreams coming true this year, wishes being fulfilled. Watch what you believe in, and you will achieve it, Scorpio. You will achieve what you believe in, Scorpio. You will achieve what you believe in, Scorpio. You will achieve what you believe in, Scorpio. Yeah, I had to run it back three times because three times is the, uh, is the number of power, the number of light. So, three of swords for Scorpio this year. Interesting um, because I like it. Because um, what other, what other, because the three, this is the three card. So three is about enlightenment. I know the first thing you're thinking of is heartbreak, but that's not what I think. I don't think that it's a heartbreak year. I think it's a year of breakthrough. It's about those things that used to be great to you. They're not great to you no more, and it's heartbreaking. It's almost like letting go of the past hurts. 
you know what I mean? Like, oh, it hurts so good because life is better now for me and things are going better for me. But I just still, man, that really hurt it. That's how I feel like certain things kind of hurt you guys in the past. And you're, it's kind of like in a resentment mode, you know, but I feel like these breakthroughs are going to come and they're going to help you because the rain is in the background. The rain is about purification. So even though the heartbreak is here, right, it's about that, you know, the heartbreak of letting go of something that you never wanted to let go or something that was dear to you that you needed to let go, right? But you wanted to keep it for your own good. And this is why I see it, because your shadow card is the queen of swords. And so she plays no game. She's coming through saying, this is right. This is wrong. I'm going to teach you the right way to do it because the women are the nurturers. That's how you know, like women are the teachers. Women are the teachers of men, right? Men are the asserters of what they've learned from the women for cancer and for, I'm sorry, North Node and cancer. That's for y'all for y'all women but uh, anyway <laughs> no but um yeah so the queen of swords is here so it's like cutting through the guilt cutting through the root chakra the pain right cutting through the things you've been holding on to just cutting it out breakthroughs hiring your level your education uh your self-worth your dedication right um just a little just because it's such a hard card like this the next card is the lovers with you guys you know, just to give you some light and clarity. The lovers came up next. So this is about, you know, the heartbreak of the past kind of changing. It's changing new relationships, new new things coming, new expressions in relationships. Like it's about to be totally different for Scorpios. And I also see like some moves because this is uh, also Mercury, right? This is also Mercury here. So it's like making moves right making making moves and learning new skills about love about relationships because us scorpios are usually dealing with relationships yes we like to be successful and live life and shit but love is very important to us i don't care what anybody says love is super important to us scorpios all right sagittarius it's Sagittarius. We just came through Sagittarius season and I really enjoyed Sagittarius season. I thought it was like special. Special. Oh yeah. See, that's what I knew y'all guys was cool. I knew y'all was cool. Look at that. Oh, so three cards popped out for you guys. I didn't mean to, but whatever. Um, I guess I'm gonna start with your shadow card. Your shadow card is the Ace of Wands, Page of Wands, which is a Sagittarius card. So this is just about finding the spark within inside of you to create new things again. Um, Y'all probably went through a tough year also, which everybody else did. Um, but I think more like y'all's was depleting. It was like energy depleting because there was, you know, Sagittarius is the lighthearted sign. They don't like all that stress and crazy stuff, right? And so that's how I feel like you guys, um, I'm sorry, my vision went out. Okay. But um, yeah, like you guys are focusing more um, on building emotional happiness and things. Look, there goes the arrow, Sagittarius arrows, right? Shooting your arrows out again. <laughs> you know, trying to see if something land, trying to make more opportunities. Uh, trying to talk to more people to get yourself out there, being more compassionate, right? And going for your dreams or, or, or just stepping into your emotional world a little bit and not, not giving everybody, you know, your information, but just kind of being, being, as she says, she's naked, like being naked with yourself, right? Um, uh, just feeling pure about yourself, like letting go of those things that happened in the past so you can have some emotional fulfillment. So I just feel like Sagittarius, this is your year, Jupiter's in Sagittarius. So I feel like emotional fulfillment, whatever you desire can come to you. You know, um, the Ten of Cups is a card of desire because we all desire to be emotionally happy. So this is about that moment, coming to that moment of gratitude, of gratitude that, hey, you know, I really appreciate life and what I have for it, you know, or what it has for me. Okay. Okay. Capricorn, 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 whoa, 
Capricorn, y'all got some stuff going on. Y'all definitely do. Them cards dropped out. Look, look they're still jumping out. <laughs> they're still jumping out. You guys. You guys. Mm. Well, they're still jumping out. They won't stop jumping out, guys. We're trying to shuffle for the deck. <laughs> they keep jumping out, though. Okay. Capricorn. What can I tell Capricorn about 2019? Yeah, 2019, Capricorn. Give me a card for Capricorn. 2019, Capricorn. These cards are so jumpy with y'all. Capricorn 2019. Same card, the high priestess. Okay, so Capricorn is stepping into your intuition, your deeper side, uh, just finding out messages from the underworld, getting messages, finding out secrets that people weren't telling you. Truths. Truths are coming to you this year. Truths that you didn't know. Um, had, um, wisdom from out of nowhere. You know, pay attention to the messages, to the 222s and the 1111s and stuff, and just see what's going on in your environment all year long. But I just feel like you're getting in touch with yourself just a little more this year. Look, the hangman sacrificing for some type of love. Uh, you guys could start new relationships this year. Some of you could start new relationships this year uh, with somebody who's more sensitive and helps you get in touch with your sensitive side. And this might be something, a relationship or something that's not really, you're used to. It's not something you're really used to, but it's coming to you and uh, it's, it's coming to you slowly, but it's for your subconscious growth. Um, and it's teaching you that you need somebody greater than yourself, right? Um, the true, the true meaning of life is sharing love right um this is the true sacrifice right here you know so i love it this is the moon and neptune so this is a visit to the past to memories to things that used to resemble something to you sitting back stepping back and observing reviewing right getting real answers for your life Your shadow card is the Empress also, which is coming up with everybody. And I guess this is kind of getting in touch with yourself because North Node is in Cancer. So it's opposite uh, Capricorn, right? And so y'all got to, it's, it's, it's almost like stepping out of that old way of being, the uh, old dimensions that you've um, been traveling to for years and kind of letting that go so you can find more nurturing into your environment, right? Not being so tough. Capricorn, because I understand it, I like being tough too, but I'm Saturn conjunct Sun, so I definitely am a serious person and can be a serious person, but this is a little different, so find the beauty within yourself, guys. Okay, so we got Aquarius, Age of, why do I do that all the time? So cliche. <laughs> but whatever. Um, Aquarius 2019. Please give me a card for Aquarius 2019. Please give me a card. Whoa, this card's slipping. Aquarius 2019. Aquarius 2019. Aquarius 2019. Here it is. Three of Wands for Aquarius. Ooh, I love it. Who's getting married? <laughs> uh, and and who is trying to move on to the future with somebody? It's kind of like, I'm not looking uh, spiritually. I'm not looking in the past anymore. I'm ready to let things go and move forward. Like, I'm already, you know, Aquarius is the future sign. So y'all already... Y'all already hit with the program for real. So I just see y'all making moves for the future for real and kind of setting your ships out there uh, to get something in life that you've really been wanting, right? Um, really that you've been needing for real. And it has to deal with somebody else. It has to deal with working with somebody else or two coming together to create something, right? Because uh, it's the three enlightenment. 
right? So I just feel like you're enlightened to something in 2019, enlightened to somebody you love, enlightened to something you appreciate, enlightened to your life, enlightened to valuing your friendships, your family members, you know, things like that, like not looking into yourself as much. You guys have the page of ones also. So I just think like time to make things happen, you know, um, making things happen in your environment for your own good, right? To further things along and create more stability, more spiritual stability within yourself so that you can be happy for what you what you got. Appreciate what you have. Good luck, guys. I hope that works out for you. Pisces, 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 last sign. This is the last. This is the end. Boom. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> all right pisces 2019 what can i say for pisces 2019 give me something good hit me with it one time mm. hit me with it two times mm. pisces 2019 give it to me 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 pisces the star that's what we want to see for Pisces because y'all been emotionally going through it and y'all need this. Pisces is about to get that healing they was looking for, right? Then this is just about studying yourself, studying, seeing the star within you, you know, seeing your brightness in the world and not letting everybody take your light away from you, right? Just seeing more of the star in yourself because we know Pisces get it taken advantage of. Y'all so nice. Y'all so nice. And y'all get taken advantage of, and I hate that. I hate to see that and hear that. You know, I've taken advantage of a Pisces before. I'm not going to lie. I have. We've all lived, right? We've done things before. I ain't even going to say taking advantage. It's just I've messed up with one before, you know? But things happen, right? And so you got to enjoy life. And so what here with Pisces, I just feel like y'all guys are finally going to get that healing that you deserve for your life. And I just feel like um, you're integrating, you're, you're becoming more into the consciousness. Um, and what I mean by that is like, you know, dealing with more people. This is actually uh, an Aquarius card, which is the sign break before y'all. So this is about hope streams and desires and the community. You know, maybe you might have the community kind of helping you out more this year you know, and opening up to new things, new resources, um, things that give you light, that help you to towards your future. It's almost like this year is going to feel like a guiding star for you guys. It's like you're following your true no north compass, right? Your true north compass and just finding out where Santa Claus is in the North Pole. So I like it. Um, and you're out. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, <laughs> So your shadow card is the devil. Okay, so we have the devil here. The devil here. Um, so this is about I just see like the the, the 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 shadow side, the dark side. Dark things have been happening to you guys, or maybe you guys have been like, you know, more in the drugs or things like that. Just things been hard. I just feel like things have been deep. And, and hard, and um, there's been addictions and sexual intimacies or flings, relationships that you ain't supposed to be in, people that you're around that are not good for you and they're bad energy, and it's time for that healing through that, right? It's time to give yourself that healing and also become one with the shadow side. I see here like the devil's hands coming out or, you know, being out like this. But then I see the lady with the two cups of waters in both of her hands. And it's like, you never know what the devil's holding in his hand. But here, the lady got the water for that, the spiritual water for that. So I think you guys are going to do great this year. Um, but that will conclude our astrological and tarot reading for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoy you guys so much. Thank you for the love. Uh, I see your comments. I really appreciate it. I wish I get to all y'all. But I just appreciate the love, the support, everything that you guys do, you know, and um, we're going to keep it up, man. Let's take it into 2019. Happy New Year's. Tarot God out. <laughs>